hello there. Um, I was out there just to get some milk. I don't get mad. At least I came back. Unlike some people in your life. Jokes and family trauma aside, I was actually very busy getting parts made for 3D printing. Especially these two. These two employ new materials and new design philosophies for the 3D printing industry for applications that are already being performed but in my opinion they could use some additional performance upgrade. Let's begin with this part. The astute among you might have already guessed what this part is. This is the crossbar for Proto 1. What's new about it? It's made from stainless steel. It's quite heavy. You might be wondering why did I use a heavier material on a machine that's meant to go fast? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Aluminium, having all its great properties, still has some compromises. Every good thing in life has some compromises. Those compromises for aluminium are that it's not a very good performer at high temperature and it suffers greatly from fatigue concentration. We do not want fatigue concentration on a machine that's meant to be reliable. This is where stainless steel comes in. Not only it has a very low thermal conductivity of about 15 watt per meter Kelvin, which is very low when you consider the world of metal. But also, using stainless steel with a stainless steel linear rail would allow me to prevent shear planes from being developing between the rail and the bar. That was the primary reason for selecting this material and I am extremely excited to see what new results use of this material would yield for us. This is a belt tensioner and why did I get it made? Well, most of the belt tensioners that were available on the market were made from thin flimsy sheet metal which is prone to bending and most of the open source designs were either too big or use 3D printed pieces which just do not hold up to the loads that are involved in tensioning belts on 3D printers. Therefore, my main criteria was that the uh, belt tensioner not only have capabilities for running high speed loads but also be extremely reliable and therefore I came up with this design. I used 608 bearings on both sides to provide the shaft with ample support. I used locks on both sides to fix the shaft in place and therefore it has absolutely zero play. I use CNC milled aluminium. Now you might be wondering why did I use aluminium here? Well, I simply do not have the manufacturing capabilities to get milled stainless steel. Therefore, the only option that I was left with was aluminium. And this is not your regular aluminium, this is 7075. So it will hold up very well when compared to your standard 6061. And that should explain you the reasoning behind this part. Now let's move on to building the machine. But before we do that, we might have a little bit of a problem. As you can see, we're using cardboard uh, for the base of our machine. So first, maybe we should get some feet for our machine. So now you might be wondering, how are we going to solve this problem? Like all our problems, the solution can be found at the bottom of a lathe chuck. And using a CNC lathe, I got this made from a stainless steel 303 bar and couple that with a rubber feet, you've got a sturdy and elegant feet for your machine. One thing that I would like to mention the function of are these. These are the razors 
or sort of risers for my server setup and they would allow me to have a cohesive package within the build chamber of the machine. I had to raise these so that if my hot end comes here, it won't hit, hit the assembly. So I had to raise it sufficiently so that I have enough clearance and I can preserve a lot of build volume. These are well within the build chamber. What I'm going to do is print a in, uh, employer for the motor and then use a fan to actively cool the servers so they are not affected by the heat of the chamber. Since they are using magnetic encoders, the heat will be detrimental to the readings recorded by the encoder. This concludes the assembly of our gantry except the hot end. You might be wondering why I didn't assemble the hot end. That would be because of this piece. To explain to you the purpose of this part, I have to show you the entirety of my hot end assembly. This is the hot end that I am planning to use. It's quite an old design. It's the BMG wind released by the Mellow company and it's actually just a knockoff of the original BMG extruder. You might be wondering in today's day and age where there are so many capable hot end and extruder combos available, why am I using such an outdated design? There is a very good reason for that. I in the future plan to use a 50 watt AC servo with this extruder and the uh, lighter extruders that are currently available, something like a VZBot, uh, VZ Light extruder and the Sherpa Mini, those type of extruders, they simply do not have the clearance required for mounting a large motor, uh, which would be roughly of the size of this 4040 fan. So there was this particular reason that I used this extruder. Uh, I know the gearing inside these extruders is not much optimized for pulling filament but uh, will cross that bridge when the time comes. I am using a Super Volcano for my hot end. Super Volcano is an extremely capable and underrated hot end. Uh, the only problem that it had was a fragile heat break which was prone to breaking even at very low speed. So to fix that, I designed this brace that I, mount, that I have mounted it directly to the uh, extruder and as you can see it's rigid it's not going to break and with this i hope that i will be able to get very good flow rates but we'll see that when the time comes so let's assemble this Now that this is mounted to the back plate, this piece is supposed to come here and this fan mount is supposed to come in between. But uh, as you might have seen, the entirety of my machine is made for metal parts and since I have splurged so much already, I thought why the the one piece that is going to be the crux of the entire machine because the hot end uh, the entire head assembly is going to mount to the machine with this piece then why should this piece be made of plastic so i have given this to be machined in aluminium and i am waiting for it and once it comes i will be able to assemble it and show you the entirety of machine in its glory until then we are going to have to wait